Hello, Cal Discoveries travelers and friends. It's a delight to be with you virtually today during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Nancy McNeil, Assistant Director of Cal Discoveries Travel, where I've been working since 2013. I've had the pleasure of traveling with Cal alumni, family, and friends on 18 memorable trips all over the world. Today, I'm delighted to be interviewing Professor Vince Resch, who's been an enrichment lecturer for Cal Discoveries Travel every year since 1996, when he won the Berkeley Campus Distinguished Teaching Award. Vince has become a true friend to us at Cal Discoveries Travel and to many of his fellow travelers. He and his wife, Cheryl, might otherwise be known as the Cal Discoveries Travel dynamic duo when it comes to lecturing and tour managing. We'd like to start our interview, Vince, with the following question. What has been your association with Cal and or the Cal Alumni Association? Well, thanks, Nancy. It's good to see you. I'd rather be seeing you in person than uh, on the screen, but uh, you Aww. just wonder to even get this visual contact. So I came to Berkeley in 1975. Uh, I've uh, been in a variety of departments, uh, most recently in environmental science policy and management, uh, but I've taught in engineering, public health, and a variety of other programs as well. Uh, my research deals with water problems in general, whether it be water pollution or waterborne disease vectors, and the teaching that I do at Berkeley relates to those. I've, I've taught about 20,000 mm -hmm. heads over the year, uh, their, their first course. And, uh, uh, and again, the, the, my, my other teaching also involves uh, water issues and, and the problems associated with either scarcity or, or disease vectors or pollution. Uh, I started doing these things, as you mentioned, in uh, 1996 with my wife, Cheryl. Uh, and I have to say that they've been an absolutely incredible part of our life, uh, not only just in terms of the experiences of going to various places, but even more, just some of the people that we met and the, uh, the, the, the really the fr friendships that have become life, lifelong that we've formed with people at Ron Cal Discoveries. Uh, it's been a wonderful part of, of our experience at Berkeley. Uh, uh, it's been interesting because a couple of times we've had former students that, uh, that have taken the trips. And, uh, wow. and, and it's, it's, it's just been wonderful. So even some relatives that have, that have come on and taken the trips with us. So uh, we... You know, uh, most of the trips we've done have been in places that I've done quite a bit of work myself. You know, I worked in Africa and Southeast Asia for various UN agencies for a total of about 25 years. So where I was there every year for a, a portion of the good portion of the year, actually. And uh, I think that's one thing that Cal Discoveries does very well is that they bring in people that have expertise either in a region or a country uh, as the enrichment lecturers. So, um, you know, I, 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 my wife also was, a, uh, was the director of financial aid uh, on the campus for a number of years, for about 30, 35 years, actually. And so, uh, you know, she has a, a campus perspective that's uh, really, that she can add from the administrative point of view and the, the way Berkeley has changed over the years, especially like for undergraduates. Excellent. Well, therein lies the evidence for the dynamic duo. Hmm. All right, let's go to number two. What is your philosophy about the role of an enrichment lecturer? Certainly after all these times that you've been lecturing, you must have some kind of little philosophy to share with us. Well, you know, I think that Cal Discoveries and the, uh, the uh, companies that they deal with, both the uh, main companies in the U.S. and then the local companies, do a fabulous job in having local guides that are really well informed, that are good communicators. Um, and they actually do a wonderful job on, on the names and the dates and the places and the, you know, the, the, the places we're going to in terms of their local history and their importance. To me, what the enrichment lecturer does is add a much broader perspective. In other words, tries to put mm -hmm. where we're going in a broader context, either in terms of, of the future history of uh, interactions with other countries in the world. And I think that this is really one of the, uh, uh, the things that, that Cal uh, Discoveries does by having enrichment lectures. Uh, there's a chance for greater discussions. And the other thing that I've, I've found is that, you know, the Cal travelers are actually incredibly informed. Um, there have been numerous trips that we've been on 
that we've had somebody that was an expert in say local geology or, uh, or public health that, uh, that, that we actually actually bring in to give talks. And, and, uh, and also there's been connections we've had with local people that we've brought in. Uh, sometimes we've actually even arranged uh, a party uh, with local people uh, that, uh, for example, in South oh. Korea, where I worked, and we had a, a great evening get together with all local people. So, uh, you know, I think that's kind of my my general philosophy. But the other thing that we've done, and this is, I think, has worked very, very well. You know, we we have some have people that uh, have just such interesting lives. You know, talk about say their careers, whether it be in the space program or whether it be uh, being forensic pathologists or uh, criminalists or something like that. Uh, uh, they can just talk about the, the wonderful lives they had and, and just share in maybe five or 10 minutes uh, on, a, on a bus ride or something. So I, I think the, the we, we've benefited tremendously from that. And I think the Cal discovers have, well, because it's like, you know, there's a guest lecturer or a Richmond lecturer, plus then you have all these uh, kind of experts on specific areas for that region. Great. Well, I think you'd agree that Cal Discovery's travel really does provide that strong educational component, which sets us apart from a lot of other uh, tours and tour operators and other choices that we have as travelers. Thanks, Completely. Vince, for that. Uh, what was your favorite trip or trips and why? Oh, boy. That's, that's tough. <laughs> I think my favorite trips have actually have been the ones to uh, Africa and Southeast Asia. Uh -huh. and, and there's multiple reasons for that. One of which, you know, of course, I worked in those areas for so long. Yes. Or, you know, when you work in an area, you don't really see the tourist uh, attractions as much. And I remember uh, mm. going with Cal Discoveries to Timbuktu. And I had been within... 30 miles of Timbuktu a half a dozen times and just never could get there. It, it just was, was too difficult logistically. Whereas Cal Discoveries had a private plane taking us in and taking us, taking us out. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think I, I have to admit of all the trips we've done, there's been something extremely special and wonderful about us. And, you know, during this time when we've been kind of uh, sheltering in place, we've looked at a lot of the, the scrapbooks that we put together on past Cal Discoveries trips. And it's, it's, it's impossible to even mention our favorites. There have been so many. <laughs> Egypt, for example, we love going to Egypt. You know, we've done, done that with, with Cal Travelers several times and many, many different types of trips. So uh, uh, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's been such a big part of our life that uh, uh, it's, it's really hard to, to name favorite ones. I'm sorry I asked you such a difficult question, but I actually turned it on myself and I thought, my gosh, I've only been on 18 and I can't possibly pick one. So mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me <laughs> that you had a hard time just picking one, Vince. How do you decide what topics you'll talk uh -huh. about in your lectures and discussions? You know, you've gone all over the world, all these different variety of places. How do you pick the topics ahead of time? Well, I always open with a, a a general lecture that I called, you know, what, what formed our perspectives about the place we're visiting? You know, what was it? Is, and because this way I can bring in popular culture, whether it be movies, mm -hmm. culture, uh, I can bring in current events, uh, I can bring in history, uh, I can bring in, you know, stereotypes as well about, about certain places. So I always try to do that as the first lecture. And that really gets discussions going because, you know, everybody, has opinions about current events and about, about movies uh, or, or something they've read uh, about that. And, you know, so many of like, you, you look at Africa, you think of how literature and movies have affected our, our perceptions of, of that. And whether it be, uh, you know, Theodore Roosevelt on safaris or uh, uh, television shows we watched when we were children, Tarzan or Rama of the Jungle or Sheena, Queen of the Desert. So I like to kind of do that. And that really sets a, sets a good uh, tone. The other things that I find work really well and that I almost always include is, is the topic of demography, the study of, of the populations themselves, because this has cer certainly economic implications. In other words, mm -hmm. is the birth rate below replacement or is the birth rate above replacement? Uh, much of the, of the developed world now has a, a lower birth rate with declining populations, with the population being filled in by uh, immigrants. And of course, this has a lot of implications, both economically and in terms of the, the, the perceptions of, of those populations themselves. 
Uh, so that's one thing I do and tie that to, to economics of that region. And then the other thing, of course, is that I'm very interested in and is the geopolitics around natural resources. You know, mm -hmm. the issues that they're facing. Uh, is it a resource-based economy that's largely on export, for example, like Australia? Uh, or is it uh, an import of resources such as, as China? So uh, this is, is, is one thing I do. And the other thing I do is and on, uh, either on bus rides or on site locations, I'll usually give shorter talks, maybe 10 or 15 minutes on something we're seeing and specifically seeing, or something that just comes up. Uh, that's uh, maybe easier to explain in front of us at a site or in front of a monument than it is to to do abstractly. Uh, so I use PowerPoints, I use visuals, I use props, you know, uh, kind of every, everything that comes along. So that's uh, that's really kind of how I do that. So it sounds, Vince, like it takes quite a bit of preparation on your part to lecture for a trip. It's not as easy as it might sound for somebody that's a professor. And I also know that you're so good about coming up with the, the movie and the book recommendations several months in advance of the trip departure, which is so helpful and appreciated by our travelers. So I know that you and several others, most of our lectures, go through quite a bit in preparing for uh, for their trip. It, it's not just like you're giving the same lecture over and over and over again in each destination. You're having to prepare for each new trip in this way. Well, that's yeah. a very good, good point because, you know, one of the things that we found personally is the more preparation that we've done either for lectures or for, for preparing uh, information for the travelers, is kind of the more we enjoy the trip, you know, more where yeah to experience different things. So you mentioned the, uh, the book and movie list. I, I think that's one thing that <laughs> was fun to, to prepare. Uh, what we found is that people are much more willing to watch a two hour movie than maybe spend you know, 20 or 30 hours reading, reading a book on, on, a, on a topic. So what uh, we do when we start this about six months in advance is we go through various uh, uh, lists of, uh, of movies that are about a topic. And we, you know, we don't include any that we haven't watched ourselves. And then, uh, you know, uh, it's fun. I, I actually teach a course in, uh, at Berkeley for freshmen called uh, Science in the Movies, how science is depicted in movies. So I've been a big fan of movies. Interesting. Uh, oh. these, uh, writing these little short crit critiques about, uh, about why we're recommending a movie or, you know, what to watch for, or, uh, you know, what to ignore uh, in terms of the, uh, say a historical account. Um, so, so we do that and that really is, is, is you know, great. And I, I think that people do enjoy it because we always, uh, you know, people will bring up, well, you know, I like this movie, uh, but I didn't like this actor or something like that. So I know they're watching it. Um, so that, that's the preparation. And then of course is, uh, uh, as I said, you know, the cow lectures are familiar with all the areas that they, they give, give yes. about. So it's a case of really getting, you know, a lot of up-to-date information, thinking of uh, uh, the, uh, you know, different ways of conveying it the best way, either whether it be in a PowerPoint or with props or something like that. So uh, I think that's the, uh, that, 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 that's kind of the best way we, to describe how we prepare. I mean, it's been, it's, it's, it's fun preparing, you know, I mean, travel is, is just such a great experience and reliving it afterwards is as interesting as preparing for it before. So that's really what we try to I do. I know you mentioned that in the letter, the email letter to the travelers when you, we send out the, uh, the book and, and uh, movie recommendations and you say, well, you may want to look at these when you get back if you don't have time to, to look at them beforehand. So that's a really good point. In terms of uh, your learning experiences, what have you gained from being a Cal Discoveries lecturer? You mentioned well, a little bit in the previous question. Is there anything yeah. else that you wanted to touch yeah, on? Yeah, no. I, I think you know one thing is is just the 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 presentation skills of lecturing to adults is mm. that you gain are so different from lecturing to say eighteen to twenty two year olds. You know, it's it's in a way it's yes. holding a seminar with graduate students because everybody brings in these different different areas. Uh, um, one of the things I remember, one of our, our trips to uh, the South Pacific to uh, 
French Polynesia. I, I've been the director of a, of a lab in Tahiti for six years. And uh, one of the couples that was on the trip uh, had actually written the textbook of marine biology that I was using to put <laughs> And, wow, uh, that was a coincidence. It was, it was very interesting because there was a little demonstration that I did to indicate why the tides didn't change, why they were the same time every day in Tahiti and why they were so minimal. And, and I did it by taking a basin and using a, a demonstration to show how the center, which is where Tahiti is in the middle of the ocean, uh, it didn't rotate. And then the instructor that, that I had, had relied on so much to learn about marine biology uh, gave me three pages of equations that we are you can know, put it this way. As well. so, uh, oh, I love I, it. I think it's uh, yeah. I've learned a lot about about teaching, about uh, about communicating, about conveying information, uh, and plus a lot of knowledge just in terms of what the uh, the people have to offer. You know, one of the things that that again we do on trips is to have people talk about uh, their experience. I mentioned this earlier, but. You know, sometimes people have talked about, you know, the development of electric cars, things that they just, you know, in, in either in mm -hmm. the or their, their own study have become quite expert in. And as I said, we use the term, you know, this is the designated expert on geology or on, uh, on, on any other topics that we have. Fun to pick out those special uh, characteristics of those that you're traveling with. How about after the trip? Do, oh, what happens yeah. after the trip? Well, this is really, uh, uh, one thing that again helps us live the trip. Um, my wife is really a, a, an excellent photographer, and she yes takes a couple thousand photos during a trip, and then uh, modifies those down to her best photos, and soon after the trip publishes them uh, on a website that's available to all of the travelers, and then Cal has their website as well. Uh, what she then does is prepare a book and she uses a, a program that's uh, through Shutterfly and she sends a copy of that book out to everybody with the, the way they can take pictures out and put their own pictures in. So in other words, kind of cool. a format that they could use or pictures they can just download load themselves. And then of course, the other thing is we've done is, uh, uh, is, is reunions. And I know now in this mm -hmm. difficult time, we're going to try to do reunions in different ways remote right but uh we've always tried to do something special and that we've uh arranged for one of the curators at one of the museums on campuses on campus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the public is that see if we can have a tour of that museum or i remember once in a, a trip we had to asia the uh, uh east asian library took out their rare books and let us come over there and, and mm. as part of the reunion nice and of course well, we here have a walk around the campus and things like that. So you reconnect with the group again. That's fantastic, Vince. Yeah. Uh, and having those campus experiences that, you know, alumni might not have even known about when they were on campus is, is really an interesting way to gather people together. Um, let, let's just um, kind of wrap up with the last question, Vince. Um, which is Cal Discovery's travel sets itself apart from other educational tours by connecting the excellence of Berkeley through distinguished faculty lectures such as yourself with the pleasure of travel to see some of the most iconic places in the world. Where are you looking forward to going to the most as an enrichment lecturer for Cal Discovery's travel and why? We're dreaming about trips. Yeah, now because we can't really travel so easily. So where where do you want to go and why? Well, I think we're. I'm very excited about an uh, upcoming trip to Costa Rica. Now, mm -hmm. I taught in Belize and Guatemala for several years a course in tropical ecology, uh, and it's the you know the the diversity of uh, of bird life that you know there's more birds there than per, per, uh, per, per acre or hectare, or whatever you want to think, any, anywhere else in the world. Um, also, you know, at Berkeley, I taught for over, over 30 years this course on uh, biology of tropical islands. These are field courses. So what I like best about oh. this coming trip is the fact that we're not seeing something that's static. We're seeing something that's constantly changing. I mean, the, the political situation in Costa Rica is fascinating. They have no standing army. Okay, it's, it's really... Wow. A fascinating place. Mm. So, so I'm looking forward to that, just to kind of demonstrate tropical ecology and, and, and to see it while we're walking along and the unexpected that, 
that come along. And again, my experience in Costa Rica is you have fabulous local guides that for the people that like the names of things, they can tell you every plant, they can tell you every bird and a little about it as well. That's a pretty doggone nice combination to have as you're visiting that country. Yeah, because I mean, yes. And then of course, the other big is a, is a return to Africa. Um, uh, we have been to Ethiopia before, and Ethiopia is one of the most fascinating countries in, in, in all of Africa. Uh, you have uh, really the cradle of, of humans. Uh, uh, you know, a few years ago, already the seven million year old uh, human fossil, of the, the uh, early human fossil, uh, was discovered there. And the chances to see some of these fabulous uh, archaeological sites where really, really humans evolved, and there were multiple generate multiple types of, of uh, pre uh, of ancient humans that were there. Uh, the other thing is that Ethiopia is fascinating because you know you have churches that go back to the third century uh, because Christianity came to Ethiopia very early, and you see kind of these sort of iconic images of what we're familiar of, of nativity, for example. But you see them in two dimensions, almost like you see the uh, iconography in the, in the uh, Orthodox Church or the 13th century. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a beautiful country. Oh. You know, the picture behind you is... Uh, um, I see that. Walls ...that uh, is lovely. Um, and, you know, again, you're, you're, you're looking at uh, the, the Nilotic or the Nile cultures because the, uh, the origin of the Blue Nile, which, you know, meets with the White Nile in Khartoum, uh, is in Lake Tana in Ethiopia, and we'll actually be there to look at the, the churches as well as the origin of the Blue Nile. So, you know, historically, it's a fabulous place. People are great, very, very friendly, very, very interesting. And uh, the other thing that's, that's, that's nice about that is that there's going to be extent, an extension to an area of Ethiopia that I've not been, or my wife and I have not been to before, which is one of the national parks in more in the south part of the country. And the other thing that Cal offers in a lot of their trips is fabulous extensions uh, that you typically Thank you. have to three quarters take. And they're, you know, uh, always related to the trip, but take you to a totally different experience. Like, you know, uh, post-India, the chance to go to Nepal uh, and different things like that. So, yeah, I, I mean, those are, you know, and, and of course, I mean, there's, you know, <laughs> the brochure, I think, God, I'd like to go on all of these trips. Uh, they're also fabulous. And so, uh, but I have to admit, those are the two we're, we're most, right now, we're looking forward to the most. Excellent. I can see why. Thanks for sharing all of that. And thank you, Vince, for your time today and, and letting us get to know you on a, a more personal level. Um, it's always a pleasure for me because I know you to visit with you and, and speak about Cal Discovery's travel. You've really made our so many of our programs uh, above and beyond because you and Cheryl I like to mention Cheryl because she is a big part of the dynamic duo when you're on trips I do know this um, and our hope today for those of you watching is that despite the uncertain and ever-changing times that our interview has brought you into the exciting educational world of Cal Discovery's travel please visit our website at alumni.berkeley.edu forward slash travel where you can see our incredible 2021 program lineup and find a trip that is sure to say pick me and yeah. you'll see vince's trips there as well by the way vince is scheduled to lecture on the costa rica trip january 14th to the 24th early next year and ethiopia departs may 21st through june 4th of 2021 thanks for joining us and so long for now may you and your families stay healthy